Hello and welcome. This is going to be a quick demonstration of the installation of Ubuntu, the new version 12.04 desktop in VMware Workstation version 8 for Windows. You need a couple of things to get started. First of all, you need the VMware Workstation product. You can get that by visiting VMware.com, looking for the Workstation page. Note that there's a free trial. Uh, simply click that button, uh, download the product, uh, get it installed, uh, and you can try that free for 30 days. Then if you decide that you like it, you can arrange to acquire it. Uh, the other thing you need is the desktop ISO. That's the uh, uh, image file of the Ubuntu installation CD. Uh, to get that, go to ubuntu.com slash download. Uh, several options on that page. The one you want is Ubuntu Desktop. Go ahead and click that. Uh, when you get to the download page for Ubuntu Desktop, I want you to take a look at the Choose Your Flavor options over here on the right. Note that there's two options, a 32-bit option and a 64-bit option. You should take the 32-bit option as recommended even if you have a 64-bit computer. It's going to work better in the virtual machine. Start the download. Save that to some place you'll be able to find later. Be aware of the fact that it's a large file, 700 megabytes. So depending on the speed of your connection and the um, how busy this, the Ubuntu site is, uh, it could take quite a long time to download. So once you get those things going, go ahead and fire up VMware Workstation. Uh, we're going to create a new virtual machine. You can either click the um, uh, Create New Virtual Machine uh, link from the home page, or you can go to File. A new virtual machine and that'll start the wizard. I'm going to recommend that you choose the typical recommended um, um, installation option. Uh, make sure that's selected and click Next. Uh, we're going to select the disk image file. Uh, I'm going to browse to find it. Remember I uh, uh, loaded it on the desktop. We're going to choose the Ubuntu 12.04 desktop ISO. Uh, click Open. Uh, and this installation will use the easy install. That's going to automate this process for you uh, and get pretty much everything installed for you. Go ahead and click Next. Uh, it's going to want a username and a password. I'm going to just say User1. User1 for the username. Uh, password is password. Uh, click Next. Uh, the virtual machine name, I'm going to call this Ubuntu 12.04D for desktop. Uh, it's going to save it to your default file. If you'd like to save it to a different location or perhaps an external hard drive, you can select the location uh, at this point. Uh, the maximum disk size that it's going to use by default is 20 gigabytes. Now that's um, uh, the maximum it will attain. It will start out small and grow as necessary. Uh, if you know that you're going to need more than 20 gigabytes, uh, you may want to bump this up, for example, if you know in advance that you're going to be storing a lot of video files. Uh, but this should be fine for a default. I'm going to suggest that you split the virtual disk into multiple files. That will make it easier to copy, for example, if you want to copy it from your hard drive to an um, a external hard drive or a, 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 um, a flash drive or something or other like that if those files are split into uh, multiple files. Go ahead and click Next. Uh, you can verify the installation parameters here. Uh, at some point you may get a prompt uh, to download uh, VMware tools for Linux. Uh, these are already installed on the system, so I'm not going to see that prompt on this demonstration. But if you happen to see that prompt, go ahead and accept that default. Um, we'll take a look at the options here. The name, uh, Ubuntu 12.04d, uh, the location where you're going to install it. Uh, the version is Workstation 8. The operating system is Ubuntu. Uh, 20 gigabytes split. Uh, it's defaulted to 1024 uh, megabytes uh, of memory uh, allocated to this machine. That's probably a good number for desktop. A network adapter is NAT, Network Address Translation. Uh, that's a good choice to start out uh, with the installation. Uh, you can change that to bridge mode later if you have a reason to. Uh, other devices, um, um, you can customize those if you want to, but it should pick up most of those uh, from your host computer. You go ahead and click Finish. And it will automatically start the installation. It will boot VMware. It will load the Linux ISO file. 
uh, and begin processing the installation from the ISO. Now this installation is going to take about a half an hour. As it installs, it's going to flash by a number of messages on the screen. Uh, these are mostly introducing you to features of the operating system, uh, things that you might be able to do, and so on. So you may want to watch this installation as it goes by, especially the first time you do it. Otherwise, go have a cup of coffee. Uh, as I say, it's going to take about a half an hour. I'm going to pause the screen and we'll return when this portion of the installation is complete uh, and I'll give you a quick tour of the desktop. And as you can see, this is one of the displays that uh, shows while you're doing the installation. Uh, there's no interaction required on your part. Uh, this is simply something you watch, but you can see that it introduces you to uh, some of the features of, of Ubuntu, uh, the new Unity desktop, and some of the applications are available. So as I say, you may want to watch this as it's installing, at least the first time. And as it's installing, you may not be able to see the whole screen here depending on the size of your monitor and the resolution and so on. Uh, if you can't, you can take the slider bar and move it down. Uh, and there is a status progression on here on the bottom. So for most of this, you can see how the installation is going on. Also note that should you happen to click in the window, uh, the installation window, uh, while the installation is going on, uh, your mouse will get swallowed up uh, in the installation um, uh, box itself. Uh, and so if that happens and you need to release the mouse in order to do something else while this is installing, uh, note that um, down on the bottom left it says press Control alt to release the mouse cursor. So just press the Control uh, and the Alt key simultaneously and that will get your mouse back. Now depending on your host system configuration, you may get a message that looks something like this talking about the CD-ROM door uh, and the guest operating system having locked it and it wants to know if you want to override anyway. Uh, disconnect anyway and override the lock. Um, actually, you're not using the CD-ROM, you're using the ISO image file. Uh, so it really doesn't matter what you uh, answer on this question, but you can go ahead and answer um, either yes or no. It defaults to no. Uh, you can take the default and that'll be, uh, that'll be just fine. The installation is completed when you reach the login screen. Now note that there are several points along this way uh, where the uh, installation program may appear to have been hung up. Um, it probably is not the case. It does take quite a while to install this, especially if the Ubuntu site is busy uh, because the installation program will attempt to download uh, updates from the Ubuntu installation um, uh, site uh, as, as this install progresses. So give it some time uh, and let it come to this point. Uh, now depending on your own screen configuration uh, for the host system uh, sizing and so on, uh, you may not be able to see the entire screen. Uh, if so, you can go to full screen mode uh, in the VM menu up here. Um, take a look at these icons. Uh, you can either select from the view menu full screen or you can simply press the full screen icon. And that'll enter full screen mode so that you can see all of the uh, Ubuntu um, uh, desktop. Now to get back, all you need to do is move your mouse up toward the top. Uh, the workstation uh, menu will return. Uh, you can uh, exit full screen mode simply by clicking on the icon. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go back to full screen mode so we can uh, get through this. Uh, go ahead and click inside this box and then enter the password you created when you did the installation. And at that point it'll take a, a minute or so for the system to uh, continue to boot up. And you'll know it's fully booted when the uh, Quick Launch toolbar appears on the left-hand side of the screen. During that time, the screen may also try to resize uh, and achieve optimum uh, uh, screen resolution uh, based on your monitor. So now we see the Quick Launch toolbar over here on the left. Uh, and I'm going to go through these quickly just to give you an introduction to the desktop. We'll start out with your dashboard home. Uh, if you click that, uh, the system dashboard will open. Uh, this will show you a list of recent applications that you used. Uh, this is a, a handy shortcut to get at them. Uh, you can also go down here to the bottom, uh, click the second icon, uh, and that will show you not only recently used, but all of the programs that are installed uh, on your system. Uh, so for right now, go ahead and click see the uh, additional results. Uh, and take a look at the programs that have been installed on your system. You'll find there's office applications, games, uh, different kinds of utilities, uh, movie players, um, uh, music players, uh, photo organization, uh, and so on. 
Uh, one that I like to have easily available, uh, and I'm going to move it to the Quick Launch Toolbar, is the uh, terminal application. This gives you the command line. Uh, there are still occasions in Linux where you need to enter something at the command line. I like to have it available for ready access. Uh, and to move it to the Quick Launch Toolbar, all you need to do is click and drag it to the toolbar and then drop it and it will add it to the Quick Launch Toolbar. And you can see down here that it's added that. We continue on now with the uh, uh, review of the Quick Launch Toolbar, uh, the icons that are installed for you. Uh, the second icon that you see is the home folder. Uh, that's where you can store your documents, um, uh, music files, videos, pictures, and so on, uh, much as you have a home folder on either Windows or the Macintosh. Uh, this is the icon for the Firefox web browser. Be sure to launch that uh, at your earliest convenience and make sure that the internet is working properly and that you can get to outside sites. Uh, from within the virtual machine. Ubuntu comes with an office application uh, that contains a writer, uh, a calc uh, spreadsheet program, and a PowerPoint-like presentation uh, program. Uh, these are installed as quick launch icons. Uh, you can remove these if you don't want them on the launcher. Uh, simply right-click on them, then unlock from the launcher, uh, and it removes them from the quick launch toolbar. Uh, note that you're not actually removing those applications. Uh, you're simply removing the icons from the quick launch toolbar. Uh, this is the Ubuntu Software Center where you can take a look at other packages you might want to install. Uh, once you launch this, you'll see a list of software uh, that you can install. Uh, and uh, there are several ways to get at this. Um, it'll display some top-rated applications, uh, recommendations, and so on if you want to explore that. You can also look at the different software applications by category. You can query them by name. Uh, if it turns out that there's an application that you would like to have, um, for example, suppose you want this particular application, uh, it's a free application. Uh, it'll give some descriptions of the application. Uh, in some cases, it'll give uh, online reviews. Uh, installation is merely a matter of clicking on the install button. Uh, and for the most part, most of these install automatically. Uh, this is the icon for Ubuntu One. This is Ubuntu's cloud uh, application where uh, you can store files and so on on the cloud. It's also got a music service similar to iTunes. Uh, the last one we'll look at is system settings. Here you can change the appearance. Uh, you can adjust the keyboard layout, language support, uh, select from different displays, uh, modify the uh, sensitivity uh, and repeat rate of your keyboard and mouse, um, manage user accounts, and this is similar to what you see with control panel uh, in Windows uh, and with the um, uh, similar um, uh, option settings uh, for Windows Macintosh. So now that we have that done, there are a couple of ways that you can exit. The first is to simply exit the system using the Ubuntu shutdown command. You can reach that by going to this icon here at the far top right and selecting, uh, selecting shutdown from the Ubuntu menu. This shuts down the virtual machine, goes through a clean, um, a clean shutdown process. Uh, the other option you have if you go back to um, the workstation and we'll get out of full screen mode uh, is that VMware uh, has a function in it that will actually suspend a virtual machine. Uh, and that'll put it into um, a state uh, that's exactly where you left it. Uh, so by pausing it here when you want to start it up again, it doesn't need to go through an entire boot. Uh, it just comes back on uh, from the point where you left it. Uh, so that's a convenient way to shut that down. Once paused, when you select this machine, either from the tabs here uh, on the display uh, or from the left uh, file, uh, file menu, uh, you see the uh, links to resume the virtual machine. You can click that or you can simply highlight the virtual machine that you want here and click the restart icon, uh, resume icon from the menu here. Uh, so that's a quick look at the desktop. Uh, the best way to learn it is to just play around with it. And this is a virtual machine, so there's very little you can do to hurt it. Uh, so have fun and give it a shot, and uh, thank you for listening.